We're speaking with Hadassah Lieberman, the wife of Senator Joe Lieberman from Connecticut, yes. our former vice presidential candidate, and Al Gore ran for president. And such a pleasure to speak with you, Hadassah. Pleasure to be here, Candy. And now you are the global ambassador for the Susan G. Komen Foundation for the Cure. Um, tell me a little bit about your Israeli, um, your Israel uh, initiative in the fall. Well, it's very exciting. We're um, Komen, as you know, does races all over the country. And they are also beginning this global initiative, which I have become part of. Nancy Brinker asked me if I would join them and help them out. So after we were in Brazil launching this great initiative, we've since had races throughout the globe. And the next place we're going to be is Israel. And I'm so excited. So it's in October. And last fall, I believe it was, we were in Cairo. A very successful race there. And I think the bottom line of this is that illness has no borders and boundaries, and cures have no borders and boundaries. So we're really looking for the cures in breast cancer. And Komen's been working on this for a very, very long time. So I joined Susan G. Komen and then started this whole effort with Israel. And we're doing it um, outside the walls of the old city. The race. The race. And it's going to be great. And we're just going to include everyone who wants to be part of it. And we will advertise it. And we have people coming from the States. And then we have people coming globally. How many people do you expect to run in the race? Oh, I don't know. You know, they had How no idea. How many ran in Egypt? 7,000, which is shocking. And they had a whole bunch of young men. And I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't part of that race. But I heard it was with so many people. It was great. So we're not sure. You know, I, I'm always wary about predicting numbers in advance. But we're working real hard. And we're going to have some other efforts that will go on simultaneously. We'll take people. Some people haven't been to Israel. Others have never been on a mission that will look at breast cancer, uh, cures, and institutions, and a think tank effort that will actually focus on the cures of the future and how we can make a mammogram smaller, better, easier. All those efforts that we need, particularly globally. You don't think of breast cancer and Israel. You think of breast cancer in the United States. The rates are so high. What's the rate in Israel? Oh, it's pretty high. I don't have the exact statistics. I should have studied that before I saw you today. But it is, it's quite high. You see, um, genetically, the Ashkenazi Jewish woman has um, a tendency to have the BRAC1 and 2 gene, which aggravates everything and, you know, really gives them breast cancer mm -hmm. at a higher rate. And it's also again, uh, amongst other women in the Jewish community. And they even find in the Middle East that in some instances, there are earlier rates of breast cancer that are showing up. So th this goes on all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we just have to look and see what's more natural to certain regions and keep asking questions and hope we get better cures all over the place. Now, Hadassah, yes. um, you are the child of uh, Holocaust survivors. Your father escaped um, from a slave labor. Your mother survived both Auschwitz and Dachau, which is extraordinary. Her own mother perished in Auschwitz. First of all, what did they, did they ever talk about their experiences with you as a child growing up? If so, what did they say and how did they survive? Yes, they did. And I know that some kids' parents didn't, and it was their way of coping. Some people had to start all over. They'd lost their families, and so they didn't engage in that communication afterwards. And some kids didn't hear about it till much later. I did hear about it often, and, you know, in detail. I used to hear from my dad about the slave labor camp and... Um, whenever I talk about it, I always say my daddy was 
learning things as he went on in his education, but his greatest lesson was obviously in a slave labor camp, and he wrote memoirs after the war, and I remember I had to translate them from Yiddish into English, and I would often look at them and sit with him. We found this uh, person who translated in Hamden, Connecticut, of all places, when Joe and I were in our New Haven home, and we asked him to translate, and all of a sudden these stories came alive. And then my mother, going through Auschwitz and then liberated from Dachau, had so many other stories to tell about bread and about all the hazardous days that they had. Like what? And just how, you know, there wasn't enough salt. So if you put your finger in her skin, any of their skin, it would leave a hole because there was no salt in the body and they stopped their menstrual cycles. There were so many things that they did to these people that it was a, a miracle after the war when my mother gave birth and she never forget how she forgot how she was in a hospital after the war and screaming as she's giving birth and she's saying, Ive, and calling out in Yiddish and someone else is calling, you know, for their Catholic Savior and the Protestant, and it was just every religion was there screaming out for help. So it was an amazing thing to be. What was the be. most powerful story that you remember them telling you? How did your father escape? Where did he go? He got out of a march. Well, they were in a march, and then he ran off, and he found him his way to um, a Christian home, and they would work there, he and several others who had escaped. How did he and slip away? How did they not he notice just, him? They, he finally, there was a moment. There was so much going on. They had rounded them up and put them into these barns, and all of a sudden a fire broke out, and he escaped. It was just miraculous, because so many died. And that would happen over and over again. He used to talk about the horses that were freezing as they were forced on their march, and they would um, have to eat raw meat from the horses to avoid starvation. There were so many stories that they told. My mother, I'll never forget, I was on a special um, tour of Auschwitz. It was the 50th anniversary, and I believe it was the Clinton administration, and they had invited me to go on this tour, which actually Elie Wiesel was there and others. And I will never forget walking into Auschwitz with our ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Poland at that time, and Elie Wiesel, and um, the president of Germany, who was in the front of the line, called Elie Wiesel to join him, and Elie said no. He wanted to walk in the back into Auschwitz. And we walked in together, and it was an incredible experience. I'll never forget that. And when I walked past the latrines, and they showed me where the latrines were, and I remembered how my mother told me that these uh, women would beat them and tell them to move on, just all the stories, one after another, and how I'd heard that from people who said my mother was so incredible because she used to laugh, and she'd make people laugh when they were at their lowest points. So we know there are too many incredible stories from that time. Hadassah, did this make them both bitter about life? No. No. My father was a man of great faith. And he used to say that many people, not all, obviously, who went in to the camps and labor camp came out, and when the war ended, they wanted to make their koshers, their kitchens kosher. They wanted to get candles for the Sabbath. 